This is a 2022 Honda Civic hatchback, the five-door version of the 11th generation Civic, and the sportier version of the 11th generation Civic, and the first version of the 11th generation Honda Civic with an available six-speed manual transmission. All good things. My name is Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I like good yeah. things. <laughs> Let's go! The Sport Touring Civic hatchback you see here is the top of four trims available above the LX, Sport, and EXL levels. That means you get dual exhaust tips, wireless smartphone charging, and a 10.2 inch instrument cluster screen. EXL and Sport Touring models are powered by a turbocharged one and a half liter inline four engine producing a peak 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. That power then goes through a continuously variable transmission and onto the front wheels. The base price for the 2022 Honda Civic hatchback is $23,915 and my sport touring test car costs $30,415. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications, including dimensions, fuel economy, and options in the description. All right, let's take a look around the car. Well, here it is, the 11th generation 2022 Honda Civic hatchback. This particular car is painted in rally red and definitely has more naturally looking, more pleasing to the eye hatchback look. When you take a look at the car in profile, it's more obviously a hatchback and has this like nice fastback flowing line. It's a big improvement over the 10th generation model. Now, being a hatchback, this is five inches shorter than the 11th generation sedan model. And it does have a couple of firsts like this aluminum hood right here. This being the sport touring model, which is the top model, it does have full LED lighting right here and down there for the fog lights and it also has this different grille to the sedan more of this like you know hexagonal kind of pattern grille and not only is it unique to the hatchback I definitely think it looks better as well when we go around to the back you can see that it's got dual exhaust tips right there and there and there is one minor faux pas those aren't the real tips right there but they're just hidden right behind no big deal and look at that huge massive diffuser making huge massive amounts of downforce yeah right there all right let's take a look inside like i like to do we'll start in the back and start with this nice and spacious 24 and a half cubic feet of cargo room right there, huzza. And this is a good time to point out that the hatch right here is now made of plastic, so it is 20% lighter than before, and it allowed for these different hinges that are a little bit more sleek and hidden within the body, so that's a nice little bit. Moving to the back seat, you know, this is based on a compact sedan technically, right? But Pretty darn decent amount of leg room here. I'm five foot 11 or 178 centimeters tall and I've got plenty of knee room. The seat bottom's a little bit on the low side, but certainly not bad. You do get USB ports down there. And if you're not fully loaded, you get cup holders in the middle. Moving to the front. Up here, this looks very, very similar to the sedan because this basically is the sedan. And this being the sport touring model, we've got all the things that the sedan has and the touring level as well, which includes a 10.2 inch instrument cluster screen and a nine inch center console touch screen. And then we've got nice dials here, more USB charging right here, Qi wireless charging down here, cup holders, drive modes, now we do have a sport drive mode, that's new, and I'll talk about that just a little bit more in a moment. And usual kind of storage bins here that we got this nice little removal slot here, and then a nice deep spot for stuff. Looking up, you do get a moonroof, sunglass, 
and if you want to let some light in you can do that there as well one more thing I want to show you about the 10.2 inch fully digital instrument cluster screen right here is a neat trick I learned from senior product planner Dan Calhoun when I was at a Honda event learning about the hatchback so let me show you that right now and uh, one other really cool thing I want to show you is if you look in the center here yeah really I see cool, the little car a little car there so it's a really cool feature so if you put on the brake you can see the brakes of your car oh on. sure if you put yeah. your headlights on the headlights come on well you, let's put the headlights on you, hey you know, if what if on, I have the headlights on and I'm braking huh yeah. ah and if you turn on the blinker <laughs> no yeah, yeah, oh blinker. look at that Sorry. and then when you're in your cruise control what will actually happen is as you're going down the road it'll actually pick up and show the cars next to you so if there's a truck or a motorcycle it'll actually show you a little motorcycle little car so no it's kidding cool yeah, that's a, a cool fun little graphic yeah, yeah. Little graphic so cool right anyway I'm excited to show you what this car is like to drive, so let's go for a drive. Hi everybody. Well, I am happy for a couple of reasons right now. The sun is out here in Michigan, which is a hit and miss kind of thing this time of year. And I am driving the 2022 11th generation Honda Civic hatchback and it is an absolute delight now for those that follow my channel know that it wasn't that long ago a couple months ago that i drove the 11th generation honda civic sedan and that car was really really good and in a large sense this car is really really similar so it's not a big surprise that this was a treat to drive but there are some key differences and some important things for us car enthusiasts as well first of all just like the sedan, this chassis is a fair amount stiffer than the 10th generation model. It is 19% more torsionally rigid than uh, the 10th generation model, so that's the resistance to twisting like this. And at the uh, mounting points for the upper dampers and back, for the shock absorbers and back, that mounting point is 17% stiffer in the rear and 2% stiffer in the front. And that means that there's a lot less movement, play, vibration, etc., right at the suspension mounts to allow the suspension to do its job. So the shock absorbers will work a lot better because they're mounted on a much, much stiffer structure. Honda did this several different ways. First of all, there's these circular structures around those suspension mounting points that I just discussed in the front and back. Also, they used uh, more high strength steel. They used 10 times the amount of structural adhesive to bond different parts of the frame together. And that's in addition to using welds. And also they used different grades of steel, high strength steel, ultra high strength steel, et cetera, et cetera, as well as aluminum in different parts of the frame. Speaking of, the front subframe is aluminum. Also like the 11th generation Civic sedan, you get two engine choices, the same, two liter naturally aspirated engine that makes 158 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque. Honda points out while those peak outputs are the same as before, they did do a lot of work to improve the engine so it is more efficient than before and just operates better than it did. So kind of like the, hey, don't let the peak outputs make you think that we didn't touch the engine. There's also the turbocharged one and a half liter and that makes 180 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque and that is an improvement over the 10th generation one and a half liter turbo model and uh, that also went through a big ring of improvements to increase horsepower and efficiency etc etc but that's not the cool part for the enthusiast the cool part for the enthusiast is that there are also two transmission options and that is the continuously variable transmission that is what's in the sedan but also a six speed manual transmission oh yes we have a manual transmission in a civic again thank goodness okay of the four trims offered for the civic hatchback the manual transmission is available on two of them the sport and the sport touring models that means that you can get the six speed manual with either the two liter engine or the turbocharged one and a half liter engine and it is a no cost option now i must admit there are some arguments for the cvt you do get better fuel economy for example and you can play with the paddle shifters on the steering wheel if you'd like 
But the manual transmission weighs 66 fewer pounds than the CVT, and that's weighed off the front of the car, off of the nose, and that improves weight distribution front to rear of the car by a significant amount. And come on, it's the manual transmission. Of course it's better. Alas, I am not in a manual right now. Of course, this is the CVT transmission with the paddle shifters and everything else, but um, while I'm not able to record a video with the manual transmission, I did get an opportunity to drive the manual transmission when I was spending the day with Dan Calhoun and the others. And uh, I can assure you that it is a very nice transmission and that Civic hatchback drives really, really well. And absolutely, the manual transmission gave you just another level of engagement that improved the experience noticeably. But CVT or manual, it's always nice to know how quick the car is, and I wanna show you how quick the car is, and I am slowing down, and here we go. First of all, I'm gonna put it in the sport driving mode. Coming to a stop, give it some brake torque, and off we go. There you go. Really not bad, not bad at all. That is darn decent acceleration. That is Civic SI acceleration from not that long ago. And uh, the CVT, you'll notice, kind of gave you these like fake gears that you were shifting through. Um, they call them fixed ratios. So if you're really hard accelerating, you're gonna get these um, fixed ratios to give you a, and I'm quoting like, more natural accelerating experience, which, it's debatable. It's still pretty obvious to me that it's a CVT and not a regular automatic. And yes, I would prefer a regular automatic, especially when Honda builds such a nice 10 speed automatic transmission that works so well. That's in the Accord, among other things. But as CVTs go, this does work really well. You do good, good fuel economy, and it largely goes unnoticed, which is pretty high praise for a CVT. Then again, like I said, if you're in the manual transmission, there is a difference. You can bark the front tires as you accelerate and you get um, much more linear acceleration and you're in full control of when the car shifts because you do the shifting. Ah, but there is actually one more thing to talk about the powertrain and that is drive modes. I do have drive modes in this car. You get three. You get normal, econ, and sport. And sport is a new drive mode to have. Basically, it's a powertrain adjustment. With this uh, CVT transmission, it will force the transmission to stay in higher engine revs and uh, maintain higher engine revs and make the car more responsive. And you also get a more aggressive throttle tip in, which some people like, I do not. And uh, it's basically powertrain drive modes only. The steering feels the same, but that's okay because the steering feels really good. And the steering's really good because Honda did a lot of work to make the steering feel really good. Uh, they did directly work on the steering system itself to try to reduce the friction in the system and just generally improve the feel. And you know, you can still tell this is an electrically assisted power steering, but it is a really nicely controlled, nicely weighted, precise electrically assisted power steering. And as modern cars go, I really like it. But they also did a lot of work on the chassis as a whole. So not only did they make the mounts for the dampers stiffer so that the dampers work more effectively, they also increased the track width and back and did the same work to reduce friction throughout the different uh, ball joints and bushings that connect all the different components in the geometry of the suspension together as well, just to make everything work better, more fluidly and more naturally. Basically, allowing the suspension to do its job more easily, which will make it do its job better. And on top of that, the hatchback is tuned to be sportier than the sedan. They did work to just like improve that feel more in the back than in the front. And doing that makes the hatchback just one step more lively, more playful than the sedan. And the sedan felt really, really good. And the 11th generation hatchback does feel better than the 10th generation hatchback. And the 10th generation hatchback felt really, really good. Honda made huge gains over 9th to 10th generation in terms of driving feel. And they've improved that even further in this car. Now this is not a hot hatch, but it definitely has hot hatch foundations here, right? You have 
playful steering, a responsive front end, decent amount of grip, really easy to feel limits that you can just dance and play around with, and just like a general lively nature. This car is fun to drive. And it's a hatchback, so it's very utilitarian. 24 and a half cubic feet of storage in back, easy to fold down seats with a 60-40 split. This is what us car enthusiasts crave. Small, fun, useful cars. And that's exactly what the Civic does. Now, what's even better is this is just the beginning because in just a few months time, it's coming this fall, there's the Honda Civic Si. And not too much longer after that is the Honda Civic Type R. Yes, that is returning and it is gonna be mega, I can only imagine. And the Civic Type R will be based on this car. The Civic Type R will be a hatchback again. And yet, despite having all that fun to drive stuff that I was just talking about that really makes me happy to say, it also has all the boxes you need to tick in terms of modern safety and modern tech. It also has the ACE body structure, which is good for crash tests. You get 10 airbags in this car to kind of like envelop you in a cushion or an accident to happen. The infotainment screen does all the things you'd expect it to do. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto connection, etc, etc, etc. So it does all the things that it has to do to be a modern car today. But thank goodness it also does the things that us car enthusiasts want it to do. The 10th generation Honda Civic hatchback made huge grounds in driving feel, like I said before. This car goes even further in driving feel. It feels better than the 10th generation Civic and looks way, way better than the 10th generation Civic as well. In many ways, we're kind of lucky that we get a hatchback at all. It's really just icing on the cake that Honda also made it better. I'm Robin Warner. Thank you for watching. And if you are still watching, I'd really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Those kinds of things really do help me out a lot. Okay, goodbye.